bless you and welcome to World Deliverance Christian Center and T.A. Clark for Ministries Worship Time. You all, we're so, so glad wherever you are worshiping with us from to have you with us on today. I'm excited about our time together. I've said it and it bears repeating. I'm not going to waste your time. We're going to get right to what God has for us on today. I just wanted to let you know, thank you so much. Invite someone else. Share the service today. As you're worshiping, interact with us. It's, it's okay to do that. Uh, type your comments. We have it open so you can share comments. And don't be surprised if some of the followers of Christ and World Deliverance don't comment back with you and, and greet you. Uh, because we're creating a place, you all, where literally you're going to feel like everybody knows your name. Welcome to World Deliverance TV and our worship time. Let's praise God together. Good morning, good morning. Happy Sunday morning to you. Thank you for joining us, World Deliverance Christian Center. It's time to worship. We're going to ask that you would go on and share the service. Let everyone know that we're worshiping now. And we just thank God for this day. We're going to have our scripture and prayer. Genesis 1.31 reads, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you, God of our, our creator, God that created everything. God, thank you for creating us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, Father God, for your love. We thank you, Lord, Father God, for this time of worship, God. We thank you for your presence, God. We thank you, Lord, Father God, for saving us, God. We thank you for those that will be saved on this day. We thank you for those that will be delivered and set free on this day, God. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. To you, our creator, we say amen.
God bless you. Thank you for worshiping with us on this morning. And what we're going to do, we're going to go straight into the word. Um, our pastor always say that uh, we're not going to waste your time. And so um, having said that, we want to go straight into the word on this morning. Excited time um, this morning as we are in our new series um, entitled, What's Next? What's Next? And so if you have your Bibles with you on this morning, I want you to go with me to 1 Kings chapter 3 verses 16 um, through 19. We're going to read verses 16 through 19 in 1 Kings. And I'm going to be reading from the in, um, the New Century Version. And it reads as follows. One day, two women who were prostitutes came to Solomon. As they stood before him, one of the women said, My master, this woman and I live in the same house I gave birth to a baby while she was there with me. Three days later, this woman also gave birth to a baby. No one else was in the house with us. It was just the two of us. One night, this woman rolled over her baby and he died. And the word of the Lord is blessed. And so are we. And I want to look at this thought and um, have it with you. I know some of you all probably going to be prepared to think about Whitney Houston and the greatest love of all. The greatest love of all. It is our prayer that on today that all of us are blessed and we just thank God for this opportunity as we share with you all today. So it is our prayer that those who are followers of Christ, those who have accepted Jesus, those who have confessed with their mouth and um, believe in their heart that he is Lord, um, that you would, um, as we're, we focus on even talking about even on this year, um, appreciating where we are to prepare for our next. You understand that, that as we appreciate where we are to prepare for our next, you have to do just that, appreciate where you are to prepare for your next because you have the what God has given you right now and he wants, he's testing you to see uh, what what are you prepared to do for, for your next? Uh, we, we want too much more, but we're not even appreciating what we have now. So how can God in his infinite wisdom give us anything, um, anything more? So we have to appreciate um, where we are to, as he's preparing us for our next. It is our prayer that those who are unchurched, those who have not um, been a part of the movement of God, um, um, for the last past six months, those who have not um, um, accepted Jesus, those who are um, uh, with out, out of outside of the body of Christ, it is our prayer that we want you to hear what is being said. Um, and we talk about the greatest love of all, and we know that the greatest love of all is Jesus Christ Himself. And we want you to be excited as we are to join us on this movement um, to experience what God is doing in our now um september 27 2007 will always um, be a day that's edged in my memory um up to that point i was had a clean bill of health you know no need for for nothing i was good um but uh, my mom after um after months of preparation and testing um, it was time for me to go what you all consider to go under the knife. It's time for surgery. Let's make it look plain. You know, I don't want nobody trying to get me and everything, but you know how we say um, it's time to go underneath the knife. That means we're about to go into surgery. See, at the time, my mother, she had, uh, was, had became very ill, and um, she was on dialysis for a while, and um, she bet up the nerve to come and ask me would I donate my kidney? I mean, you got two. I just need one. And after that, you'll still have one. So I'm like, all right. So um, terrified out of my mind. Now, this is my mom, you all. I'm terrified out of my mind. I, I, I prayed about it um, because uh, uh, let me just help you help us out even in saying this, that, you know, don't go and do and get into nothing without praying first. As much as as much as you want to do. Uh, uh, for for or do something um, uh, for uh, whatever the situation is, you first need to seek God to to, in, uh, to make sure that you're doing the right thing. So even with my mom, I prayed about it, and and and, and 
and I, I prayed about it, uh, and, 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 and I thought about this too, in, in prayer, after praying, I was like, now what is it, why did she ask me? And I came up with the ask. I mean, she did house me for nine months. She, she, she did, she did literally put her life on the line to, you know what I mean? I mean, I don't have a, you know, small head, you know, um, so, you know, she did push me out. She did take care of me up to that point. She did cook for me, kept me healthy. So, you know, maybe I can return the favor because see, here's the deal. You all, as we, as we are on mission for Christ, it's, it's one thing to, to receive, but it's another thing to give back. As we receive, we should re-gift the gift and keep it moving. We we should we should always look forward to not only to be receivers, but to also to give. And so I was terrified out of my mind, prayed, and I had to go through a whole process. Now, this was my mom, but I still had to go through a whole process of consultation and testing and 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 and, and hours and hours and days in and days out to the hospital back and forth to finally we were there and so we had the surgery besides a little soreness that I experienced the surgery was a success and they removed my left kidney unfortunately my mother made her transition four months later many people in there are concerned about me Ask me questions without asking me questions. What do you mean, Bill? So they asked me, they wanted to know, but they didn't come. They wasn't straightforward. You ever had somebody to come straight, come and ask you a question without being straightforward with it, like beating around the bush? No, you got to beat around the bush. So, But they was concerned about me, so I, I gave them the benefit of the doubt. So they would ask me, um, and, and without asking me, they would ask me, without asking me, did I have any regrets of the surgery? And so my response to them was knowing that my mom would pass away. Um, would I still would I still have went through with the surgery? Because the goal of the surgery was that it would help her without any complications. So the goal of her having the surgery after prayer, after consideration, taking everything into consideration after consult consultation, the goal was. Um, no matter how I would feel of the surgery, the goal was that at some point she was going to get better. So I did what it took for right now and see towards the future of what the outcome was going to be. So I knew that I was going to be in pain and we was going to be okay for, we was going to be set back for a little while, but at some point we was going to be back at Red Lobster because that's what we used to do. We used to go to Red Lobster. And so I knew at some point mom's going to take us to Red Lobster and we was laugh and joke about it. And, and and so I looked at I look forward to those things. But you see, quite often we can't see the past because we allow ourselves to be clouded with the now. But those who are followers of Christ must capture of what God has done. I'm going to break this down because I'm in school, y'all. So um, some of y'all, you know, you, you I'm going to break this down for you. So we for those who are followers of Christ must capture on what God has done. That's the past. What he is doing right now. That's the present. So that we can be prepared with great expectation and high anticipation on what he's going to do in our lives while we are on mission for him. So we, 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 we thank God for what he's done. We thank God for what he's doing. And it, it strengthens our faith to what he's going to do. I tell people all the time, God didn't spoil me because I didn't see him. I see him do. I see him doing right now. And it just gives me great expectation of what he's going to do for in the future. I don't know how he's going to do it. And I don't even it's not up to us to determine how he's going to do it. The fact of the matter is that's when faith kicks in to let us know that he is going to do it just based off his track record. I, I love the scripture, his mercies and do it for ever so every time that every time that i look at, at get caught uh, attempt to get caught up into um the trials of life 
I have to sit back and realize that God is not new to this. He's used to this. And if I know that he's used to blessing me, I know that no matter where I'm at in my life, he's going to make a way. I don't know, God, how you're going to do it. And I just need to speak to someone right now. Don't get caught up in what's going on with right now. Don't get consumed in what's going on right now. Be excited for what he has done, what he's doing, so you can be prepared for what he's going to do for you next. Somebody type in and say, I'm, I'm expecting for my next. I, I'm waiting. I'm, I'm expecting for next. Somebody just type in next, 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 next. Because you have the faith on what he's doing in your lives right now that he can't do nothing but prepare you for your next. So the first thing and the only thing that we're going to look at today is true love does not neglect the future. True love does not neglect the future. So let me just let me give you a little backdrop um, on what's going on here and in, um, in, 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 in our scripture reading. Uh, um, Solomon is king, um, and we had talked about him in our previous messages. Um, his father uh, was David, and 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 now um, Solomon is the king. And and, and one of the things that I, I you know, I, I, if if you listen to me uh, or or know me, you know, I, I'll say I'll say uh, uh, two scriptures that I uh, that I really love, you know, and it just it, and I love them because it, it it helped me at a point in time in my life. And so we all know Isaiah six and one. And but the other one is David um, when he said, "I will bless the Lord at all times; His praises shall continually be in my mouth." My soul shall make a boast unto the Lord. The humble shall hear and be glad thereof. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. You know, I can I can say that um, but uh, because because I, I, I see David in his life and where he was at that time. And, 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 and my new, not necessarily my new, but his his the, the son of David, uh, 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 Solomon, uh, when you look at his life, you got to appreciate and then look at uh, look at his life to kind of like measure up where you at. And, and, and so in, here in first Kings, um, Solomon, Solomon was leading um, the people and, 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 and he was he was he was doing everything. He, he, he reverenced God. He respected God and it showed in his life. And, and 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 what happens when you do that you want the you want whatever surrounds you or the people that surround you to have that same feeling and that same expectation that you have because it, it's, it's one thing to say i can do it but to bring people in that's where that's where the rubber meets the roll that's where the rubber meets the roll where you can bring everybody in that surrounds you into where you're going and so I believe Sol that's what Solomon was doing and, 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 and maintaining that respect and reverence to God. Um, God came to him in a dream and just based on what he was doing and, and how he was um, um, uh, 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 reverence God, God uh, rewarded him. And, and, he, and God asked him, you ask me whatever it is that you want and I give it to you. And the thing that Solomon asked as he was leading the people was wisdom. He could have asked for money. He could have asked for 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 uh, for cattle. He could have asked for anything at that time, but he asked for wisdom. Because here's the thing, you all: as you lead, or as you let, let, let's, let's stop right here. Our our what we should be doing is we should be follow. We're followers of Christ, and we should be doing just that, following Christ. So as we lead people to Christ, as we're following Christ, that should be the our main objective. And so we should we should ask for those things to help us lead people or disciple people. And so Solomon knew that he was in a position in leading people, ask for wisdom and, and, and knowledge and um, to, to, to lead the people. And, and, and God rewarded him just based off that, because as we lead people and disciple people, it's one thing to lead people, have the heart to lead people. So those who of us who want to uh, are on mission for Christ, we're looking to lead people, not to control people. You see, had he asked for money, then he would have been arrogant because he had the money. Had, had he asked for the cattle, it was nothing that he would figure out that he needed. But he knew that he had if he asked for the wisdom and knowledge that God would grant him. And so in, in first Kings. Um, 10 um, chapter 3 verses 10 through 15 it reads the Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked this so God said to him you did not ask for a long life 
or riches for yourself or the death of your enemies. Since you ask for the wisdom to make the right decision, I will do what you ask. I will give you wisdom and understanding that is greater than anyone has had in the past or will have in the future. I will also give you what you did not ask for. Ain't that something right there? Here you are. Let's, let's finish reading this. I, I, will give, I will also give you what you did not ask for riches and honor during your life. No other king will be as great as you. You will follow me and obey my laws and commands as your father David did. I will also give you a long life. Verse 15, after Solomon woke up from the dream, he went to Jerusalem. He stood before the ark of the agreement with the Lord where he made burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. After that, he gave a feast for all the leaders and officers. Isn't it amazing about how our God who knows us and what we ask, as long as we put him first, he will always take care of us. As long as we seek ye first the kingdom of God, all his righteousness will add, uh, we'll be added unto, added unto us. But we first got to seek him first. Then we'll, let, let it be known, have you ever prayed or, or considered not yourself? Have you, have, have you ever considered not yourself? As followers of Christ, we have to be in a position to not to consider ourselves all the time. Yeah, we ache. Yeah, we hurt. But I, I remember someone told me um, when, when I get a chance to pray for somebody, I always tell them as an encouragement, thank you for allowing me to pray for you. Because as I'm praying for you, you need to pray. But I need to practice. Because the fact of the matter is, we yeah, we all need prayer. We all need the uh, we need the, uh, um we need God in our lives. But how about every time that every single time that we put God first, He always take care of us. It's nothing that we can ever need as long as we put God first. So Solomon put uh, put the wisdom, asked for wisdom, and yet and still God still supplied everything that he needed. And so that was a little backdrop of what, what was taking place. But understand that in, in, in when you get to verse 16, it, it explains to us that two prostitutes went to Solomon claiming that a child belongs to each of them. One had a child and smothered it. Long story short, she did not do what it took to take care of it. She was careless and allowed it to die. Two women were gifted with the birth of a child, but yet and still, one was careless and the baby died. It amazes me, you all, on how we can receive things from God, but still be careless. No, knowing that is not, we, we can clearly see what God is doing in our lives and knowing that it was nothing that we did that 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 equated for us to receive on what God was giving, and yet and still we 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 neglect the gifts and the blessings that He has blessed us with. And so these two women are now in a dispute, and it also amazes me how people often want what you want what you get. Isn't that amazing how people want what you get but don't know how you got what you got? It it it, it took it, it it might took sleepless nights and sacrifices and people still they just want they people just want what they see. And and, and we living in this reality TV uh reality. And so 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 and so let me step on a couple of toes for a second. So we want the baby bump, but we want to want the responsibilities of having a child. We 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 want we want the big 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 wedding, but we don't want the work of the marriage. We 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 want the we want the we want the big job. Give me give me the the executive job, but but we don't want the work that comes with it. We 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 we, we see people so called living their best life, but we don't know because that's all they showing us. But we don't know how many times people in the backdrop had to sacrifice time, had to sit in meetings, had to had to sacrifice anything to get to where they at. But yet and still, we don't appreciate 
what we have right now. Cold sleeping can kill. These are some practices that we have which were not right years ago, but certainly are wrong now. And one of the one of the things that we one of those practices now is smothering our youth to the extent that they cannot breathe. Let me just let me just say this. Um, here, here's the deal. All of us have a purpose. Even our children have a purpose. And 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 we as parents, 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 hear, hear me out, parents. Let me let me let me let me sit up straight. Parents, hear me out. The fact of the matter is that God gifted us our children. They all belong to God. So as yeah, we have the responsibility to 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 put them in a position to look forward to what God is doing, but they don't belong to us. They belong to God. And so what I find what I what I think was going on is is that we smother our children because we haven't invested in our children. We 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 smother our children because we scared that that we don't because we don't we don't know what's gonna happen to them because we haven't prepared them for the world that's out there. So we smother them. We 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 make the decisions for them. But can I can I help you? Can I help us out for a second? Sometimes it's best to figure out where if especially to those let, let me just help the, those who are, are investing in their children let me help you out sometimes you have to see where your children are at so how do you do that ask them a question what what would what would you do what would you do in this situation you know if you if you if, if, if you had if you had a hundred dollars in your account and 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 you had um uh, uh your light bill that was due and you wanted to go out which one are you gonna choose? That's where you see where they at. But instead of telling them you need to pay your light bill, and if you get something left over, then you can have a good time, whatever the case may be. But instead, we need to see where their minds is at. But the fact of the matter is, we smother our children, don't allow them to grow because we scared because we didn't instill any values into them. Because we wanted them to. We wanted to relive our lives in their lives. See, God didn't God didn't make none of us the same. He made us all different. And yet they did come from you. There's no denying the fact. Mama's mama's baby, papa's papa's maybe. Mama's baby, papa's papa's maybe. Yeah, that, that is true. But however, the fact of the matter is they all came from God. And we cannot smother it. So we have to do what the word tells us to do. Proverbs 22 and 6. Train children to live the right way and when they are old they will not stray from it yeah they they gonna get old and they gonna get this make decisions I mean, as, as transparent as i try to be let me tell you all i'll tell you this when i i grew up in the church i accepted i accepted um i, I became a follower of christ at the age of eight from the age of eight um i was there i was in the choir I, 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 um, um, I, 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 I was an usher. I was a deacon. I, I worked the soundboard and all these things happened because, um, because the, the calling that was on my life, but it took the one who's responsible for me to make those things happen. And so what she did not do was smother me to allow me to be exposed to, 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 to the salvation of Jesus Christ. She didn't force me to, to say Jesus was my savior, but she brought me to the place where Jesus was. She, 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 she allowed me to hear. She made me. Yeah. We wouldn't know. It wasn't no um, debate on if I was going or not going. And my mother didn't drive. So sometimes we walked to church. Yeah. We walked down independent. Some of y'all familiar with the West side. We walked up the block to, um, to what is Hamlin, to um, to you cross the bridge, now you're in Independence, and then we walk from Independence to Central Park, and then we make that right on Central Park and make that left, and we was at the church. We did that. It wasn't no, it wasn't no exception. And, and so she bought me, ensured that I was there to receive. But as I matured and I got older, there was a time where I just said, you know what, this church thing ain't for me. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. And, and for two years, for two years, I left the church. Now, I, I made my special appearances. 
You know those special appearances that we make? I made. I came on Easter. I came on Christmas service. I came for Mother's Day. That was my three times I came. Outside of that, you wouldn't see me. But I neglected everything. But I thank God that even all of that, God never turned his back on me. He was always there. And just based off how my mother did not smother me, and she trained me up in the way that it is it said that with that when, when when they get old, they will not stray from it. And yet and still, at that time, although I walked away, I felt that it was something that was missing. And that something that was missing was my relationship and how I needed to be invested and be a part of the movement and how God was moving in, 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 in a time of day. And I was missing that. And so what happened? I rededicated my life back to it. I rededicated my life to back to God because I knew it was something missing. And the only reason why I knew something was missing is because my mother trained me up in a way that she knew that life was going to happen. I was going to experience it. But at some point, it would all come back. So we can't be in a position to smother our children. We have to allow them to live their God-given purpose. And while we, while, while we allow them to live their God-given purpose, we have to allow, we, what we have to do is we have to trust God. We have to fully trust God. We have to trust God knowing that when they leave those doors, no matter what we say, they gonna do. And, and I'm reminded, and here's my jovial part, I'll say this, Adams got on me a couple of weeks ago and she told me that um, you said that, you know, cause you the youth pastor. But let me tell you something, just back in the days, they had the men hair club and the, and, and, and the man was said, not only am I the president, I'm, a, I'm the client. So not only am I the youth pastor of WDCC, I'm also a father. So I got kids, so I know that, uh, 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 so I'm not saying something that I, I, I think, I'm saying something cause I know it. I know that we have to trust God with our children. We can't smother them. We have to allow them to let God do what God is going to do in their lives. But that doesn't stop us from praying for them. That does not stop us from being consistent with them. That does not stop us from saying what, what, what is needed to be said. That's not stopping us from giving a hug when a hug is needed. That's not saying, not saying that it's, uh, we're not getting into it, but I, this is the rules of this house. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So it, that goes to say that on Sunday morning, we getting up and we going to worship God right here in the living room because that's what it takes. And we allow God to do what God, only God can do. God has a purpose for everyone. No one is born without purpose. This does not mean we have to wait until we are the age of consent to operate in our purpose. No, we can teach we can teach them from an early age to seek what God has for them to do. We have to know that um, that as we as we're investing in our children, as we're investing as, and, 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 and as we're being on mission for Christ. Even those who are on mission for Christ, I know I say it about parents, but even those who are on mission for Christ, you all, we have to know that God can do anything. He, God can do anything but fail. And the fact of the matter is he cannot fail. And so as we are on mission for Christ, as we are on mission for Christ and we're telling people about the goodness of Christ, we have to exemplify on what God is doing in our lives right now. We have to exemplify to let them know we talk about the greatest love of all, which is Jesus Christ himself. And he invested, he was embedded to know that uh, I'm not giving up on you all. I, I know that at some point that you're going to turn your back on me. The very same people who, who, who yelled Hosanna, Hosanna is going to be the same ones that say crucify me. But yet and still, I'm going to die for you. And so we have to be consistent and appreciate where we are to know that God has got something great in our necks. Jesus 
knew he came to the world to die. But he's sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercessory on our, on our behalf. That's what he did for us. And so just like I explained earlier, we have to re-gift. We, we have to, we have to re-gift the gift. We have to invest. We have to give back. We have to show God in, in, in the lives of those who are down in despair. It's a tough time right now. But I didn't hear him to tell you that God is still in control. And he is he is great. The challenge as follows of Christ. It is it is it is our responsibility to appreciate where we are and prepare for what is next. This includes being good and faithful stewards to what God has blessed us with. The same God who has blessed us in the past is blessing us now in the present will be the same God that will bless us in the future. The challenge this week is to grasp hold of this movement and help someone else fulfill their God-given purpose through how you share and show appreciation for the God whose mercies endure forever. God bless you. We thank you again for worshiping with us today, but we thank God for all the singing and we thank God for the word. But we look forward to this time to be a part of what heaven is doing. You see, he, uh, we, we understand that heaven rejoices if one comes into the kingdom of God. And so we want to offer this time um, as we um, offer new life to you. You, if you unchurch, um, we said it in early on. If you haven't been a part of a, uh, a, a of, of this movement for six months, um, you we're, we're talking. You could type the word in disciple, and someone will get back with you. The numbers on the screen text the word disciple. Um, you, you say that you hear what we saying and heard what was said, and you still don't know who this person that we talk about is Jesus. But Jesus is the one who died on Calvary's cross just for you. And on the third day, he got up with all power in his hands. And he, he, he knows you. He knows the very hair on your head. And he is the one that wants you to join us on movement, on this movement for, for him. And so you can text the word disciple. And it's okay that you don't know, um, uh, um, don't know a lot, but you have a lot of questions. But well, we want to help you with that. And so you can text the word disciple and someone will get back with you. If you want prayer, um, you can text the word disciple. We want you as we are on mission for Christ. It's, it's good to have to look to our left and to our right to see you, our brothers and sisters in Christ, as we are on, move, on, on, on this movement for Christ, doing, um, being about our father's business. So if, you, if that's you, you can text the word disciple um, to the number that's on the screen. It's right there on the screen. Someone will get back with you. God bless you. Hey, God bless you. I just want to let you know how much I thoroughly appreciate you trusting us with your time. Thank you so much for being here with us on today. And hopefully you know I'm a man of my word. I said we weren't going to waste your time. And hopefully that one did not waste your time but you consider it time well spent and actually that we have a value to the time we spent with us today. Before I let you go, let me just remind you about the first book, Long, where God has planted you. It's time to fulfill your God-given purpose. And if there's anything we ever needed to know right now, we need to know what our purpose is. You can order the book. You even can, for some, use it for small group discussions. Some churches actually have done that. And a group of you all can discuss your purpose from God. Again, thank you for being with us. Stay on to the end. Again, to see the various platforms where you can interact with us and engage with us. I promise you, if you reach out, 
we will reach back out to you also. Oh, one more thing. When you post, I try to read every post. I'm doing best to respond. So go ahead and, and drop a comment. I'll correspond with you. Thank you. Where are you going? Put your mask on. Mask on. Mask on. Mask on. Put your mask on. Mask on. Mask on. Mask on. Put your mask on. Look. Six feet. Don't get close to me. Wash your hands. Do it frequently. There's a crowd. I'm about to leave. Look at dude. He about to sneeze. Mask on.